Hello. True Oracle in a hoodie mood today. Got a hoodie going on for the first time in a while. So, let's dive into being micromanaged. <laughs> I have been taking myself through the masculine initiation process. I'm about a week outside of just finishing my own clears for it and my own process. And I have three clients that are, I have one client who's a week into it and two clients that are a day into it. Um, and this process is an emotional clearing process, an energy working process, specifically designed to help initiate and integrate our inner masculine, help elevate it to a new level, mature it, evolve it. It's about bringing you to a space where you're reaching neutrality um, energetically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, <laughs> um, and physically through our nervous system. You're reaching that space of neutrality around what these concept, concepts mean to you what they represent to you, how they show up to you, how you express them, um, the triggers you feel around things, healing and releasing trauma you may have around them. And I, trauma with a little T for me. Um, I don't do trauma with a big T work. I have experts and therapists that I always uh, recommend if you're dealing with um, trauma in particular. But the little traumas and the triggers and our programming and conditioning around the masculine and our inner masculine and what that means and what that looks like and what it, how that relates to our feminine and the feminine in general. And I shared in the last video a little bit about how um, this stuff connects to a self, ourselves individually, but it's also about the collective and where we are as a world right now and what we're evolving through. And the masculine is being asked to evolve right now and show up and um, own other parts of itself that it has been conditioned to uh, deny, repress, hold back um, things that we have been taught around what it means to be masculine and feminine and their expression and their attitudes and behaviors and mindsets. Uh, looking at a lot of those conditionings, the framework that are in our belief system. And I want to talk about micromanaging because <laughs> if you've ever been micromanaged, you know it's shitty. You've been asked to do something and to complete something. You have a job to do. You have tasks on a to-do list. You have a project you want to complete or a school a report to finish. And when someone micromanages you, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> it is an experience where we start to feel annoyed and bitter and frustrated because we're being interrupted. We're being shown that the people around us don't trust us to do what we need to do or the people in charge or above us. In some way, um, it starts to breed resentment. It starts to be something where it creates the uh, miscommunications. There are disconnects now between you and these people in your life. Um, whether you are conscious of it or not, this is what it does because micromanaging comes from a space of distrust. So I don't trust that you know how to do it or you will do it. You won't do it right. I don't think you're going to cover it. I don't trust that you're going to show up. I don't trust that it's going to get done right. So I need to constantly be riding your ass to make sure that you get it done, make sure that you're doing it right, make sure you're doing it the way I think you need to do it. And it create because of where it comes from within the person that is doing the micromanaging, the distrust, the um, inability to let go of control, a need for power and control and superiority and hierarchy to be followed, a feeling of I'm better than you, so you have to do it the way I wanted to do it, um, expectations that aren't communicated, a fear of maybe it's the fear of higher ups that are going to criticize this person and this team leader if it's not done right, so they're a fear of of displeasing or not be see, not getting the approval of those in a more um, higher up position right above them in some way or the approval 
because of where the the action of micromanaging others comes from, that's what is then now bred between the micromanager person and the person being micromanaged that breeds distrust, disconnection, and fear. And um, it, it just creates resentment. It creates space for anger. It creates space for repression and oppression. And it creates a dynamic between the people involved in this that isn't conducive to showing up and creating amazing things. It's not conducive to a fully fulfilling and deeply satisfying experience. It's not conducive to creating deeper relationships and connection between people and partners and relationships whether they're romantic or work related, it doesn't really matter, or just friendships or family. This is what happens when we are micromanaged. So I titled this, Have You Ever Been Micromanaged? Because I want you to think about those experiences. If when you have been micromanaged, when someone has continuously checked up on you and said, it's not good enough, do it this way, do it this way, when someone's over your shoulder, when they're hovering, when they're they're doing the micromanaging, to recall what that feels like, to recall what that experience does to you, how your body responded, how your nervous system responded, the beliefs that were now formed, the stories that were formed in your head about this person and about your relationship, your abilities, and the limiting beliefs that might have been formed depending on when this was. Um, because I want you to understand what our inner masculine has felt in some ways, in one way or another, for years. If you've been micromanaged, you're not going to be proactive. If you've been micromanaged, you are going to show up and do the bare minimum. You're not going to go above and beyond. If you've been micromanaged, you will be timid and afraid of showing up. It feels disrespectful. You feel unappreciated. So you're not going to be fully supportive. You're not going to be fully grounded. You're not going to be able to, to follow through. That's a big one. You're not going to be able to follow through. And our inner masculine has been micromanaged for a long time by the feminine because the feminine hasn't trusted. The feminine has been in that space of fighting back against having things taken from them. Um, their power, their control, their sense of self, their identity, their, their money, their body. I just wrote a post about that. Um, I think that's the most recent post currently. Uh, with my, uh, It's a picture of Andrew and I, my husband and I. I think it's in black and white and it talks about how giving and receiving are the two natural directions and only existing directions between masculine and feminine. And this taking is something that comes from fear. So we've been in decades, if not centuries, where the feminine has had experienced a taking from them, taking away from them, taking from them, taking them um, and being powerless. So as the feminine started to rise, the feminine started to try to find ways to burst forth and to take charge, to grow, to expand. And in that process, when she doesn't trust, when she doesn't uh, agree with the way that the masculine has been before, both your own inner masculine, as well as the masculine as it is represented to you in your life, she has shown up in that way, like being the one that does the micromanaging. So if you can understand where this concept comes from, why the feminine is, has been micromanaging, why uh, moms and women do this in particular. Look at yourself. Look at where you are micromanaging yourself, your children, your husband, your spouse, your coworkers. Be willing to look at where you are micromanaging. And now you can start to question and understand there's a lack of trust. There's a lack of belief in this person. Uh, and I'm not allowing them to rise and show up in their fullest and best. And when you look at that dynamic and you start to understand that what you're doing to these other people is what has been done to you, we can start to take responsibility for them and change them. So instead of micromanaging someone else, and instead of having a, a masculine that is has been micromanaged, so he feels defeated and deflated and incapable, and he's had um, a lot of people will go so far as to use the term demasculated, um, he's been, or emasculated. Um, it's true. If you go far enough, how do you repair that? 
is to first start noticing that relationship in yourself and start to breathe into and choose to trust, to choose to communicate more effectively and efficiently. I have a book all about communication. It's called The Gap in Communication. It's on Amazon Kindle, available all over the place. It's like five bucks or something. Go snag that because that effective communication between you and yourself your inner masculine and yourself, and between you and partners and people is going to help rebuild this trust, rebuild the relationship you have where both people, both parts, can start to show up and fully be themselves. And when we do that, what is created is something that is powerful, something that is potent, something that is actually going to be deeply fulfilling and satisfying on every level. So it's time to be honest with yourself and start to look at, are you micromanaging your own inner masculine? When you set a goal for yourself, when you decide you are going to do something, you are going to create something, you are going to reach a goal, you are going to change something, create a new habit, start something new, do you micromanage yourself? Is there the type of conversation within yourself and in your journaling and in your mind that you have to check in on it every single day? You have to check off the to-do list items and you have to be nitpicky about what's on that to-do list and write out every single detail. And for a lot of people, having a routine and having a list and having that type of structure is empowering to them. But when you're doing it from the energy of distrust, then your routine and to-do lists are actually debilitating you and starting to hinder the progress you're making. Are you micromanaging yourself? Are you forcing yourself to keep your goal at the front of your mind and to keep it focused and to check off your to-do list and to look at your calendar and to are the steps that you're doing and you're checking in on yourself and is it from a place of love and trust or is it that micromanaging energy? It's time to be really honest about how you treat yourself when you're striving for a goal and we're lo- you're looking to achieve it. Why do you have those things? Where is this energy coming from? What is your intention and approach from this? And to be honest about the relationships in our life. I know yesterday, for instance, I had a moment. This is why this is such a hot topic for me right now and why it's what I'm sharing is because I had back-to-back client calls yesterday and... Um, I had to, I moved one a little bit in my time slots so that I actually had a break in between so I could kind of go grab a snack, go pee, do all that stuff, right? Give us a little bit of space. But that meant that it went over a little bit of time. So I wasn't, I was going to be in a client session when my son needed to be picked up for school from summer school when my husband would have had to leave and uh, make sure that he was there on time. And I felt myself wanting to micromanage him. I felt myself feeling like I need to act, I need to make to remind him three, four times before I even started my client calls. Before I got on that second one, I was gonna I needed to remind him again. I felt the urge in myself to set an alarm to remind him. I felt the urge on my client call when it got to be close to that time, when I could see that little time in the corner of my computer, I felt the urge in myself to send my husband a text message, be like, get ready to leave soon. Don't forget to pick up Liam. And everything in me felt that sense of like Ooh, I gotta, he's, I don't know if he will. It's, he's not going to do it the way that I do it, the way that I expect to do it. Is he going to do it? What if he forgets? And the story in my head, I could feel this desire and this need, this attachment to micromanage him. And because I do this work for myself and for clients, and especially because I'm in deep into this masculinity container, in my own journey as well as with clients taking them through this initiation process, it's looking at, um, not ironically, there's literally a text message from my husband at the top of my screen right now telling me that he made it to take my daughter to archery today. And I felt the same thing today that like, I have to be willing to address this within myself because it's got nothing to do with him. If I start to let my micromanaging and that stuff come out and be towards him, And I do remind him all the time, text him all the time, create the to-do list for them so that I'm in control and I'm seeking, making sure that he's meeting my expectations and doing these things. 
if I start to put it on him and act this out on my external relationships, it creates the distrust in him and in us. It creates the disconnect between us and my relationships externally. And that's not what I have said I want to ultimately create. So I needed to be able to look at myself to feel it, to accept that there's a little bit of this micromanaging desire and to to retrain myself to take a breath and to lean back and to choose to trust him because we have built our relationship that far where I know that I can. If you were to go in the opposite direction and just be throw your hands up and be like, well, I trust him to do it all, that's not the same thing. That's not alliance. That's still being a pain in the ass defiant rebel if you've listened to me talk about the two sides of the same coin with compliance and defiance. That's choosing to let go of all your power. That's choosing to lean back way too far. And that's not sitting in alignment and going to create ultimately what you want because you're hoping secretly that he will fail and then you have him to blame, right? You're putting it all on him or these other people and then you have someone to blame when it doesn't all go right because you're like, well, I trusted, so it's all on you and I can't trust you now. Bullshit. You have to bring it back to yourself and learn how to trust yourself above all else. There's a difference when I feel the nudge to, oh, perfect example of this is today. This is all such a great example of this and like my specific life to give you these examples. So yesterday I felt those things and I felt that it was my me trying to control, me trying to make sure that the way I would do it would be what helped him and what was happening, me trying to make sure that I was getting everything done and I was in control of everything rather than delegating and trusting and choosing to follow through with this. So I felt that yesterday, right? That it was like, I felt the need to micromanage Andrew, remind him several times to pick up, pick up Liam, remind him when he was gonna have to leave because I was so worried it wasn't gonna get done and it wasn't gonna get done the way that I wanted it to and it was gonna end up being a mess and poor Liam was gonna pay the price and blah, 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 right? My brain makes up all these stories. So I felt those, I did not act on them yesterday because I could identify that it was me trying to micromanage and I know what it's like to be micromanaged. And I don't want to create that dynamic between Andrew and I. So I always am making a choice of what am I ultimately trying to create and does this support that or not? This goes back to getting clear on what you want and what you're creating intentionally in your life. I know what I want to create with my husband. I know what I want to create with my business and the goals that I have for myself and the achievements I'm striving for. So I can clearly be able to have these conversations, this effective communication, again, go buy my book, The Gap in Communication, within myself and between my husband and I or my kids and I or my clients and I, this communication that's like, you know what? If I choose to act on that fear, that feeling, that nudge, that's that's not creating what I ultimately want. Now the difference happens, and it's again, it's that communication within yourself, was today there was another opportunity where I could have been micromanaging Andrew um, around we have a payment due for my daughter's archery, and she only accepts cash or check. So I don't write checks very often, and I don't carry cash very often anymore. So there was this moment today that was, I had to have the conversation within myself of, we talked about paying that check, writing that check today. We talked about it uh, yesterday, I think last night. It was like, oh, that payment's due. We got to remember a check to take it to our tree. And my husband was like, yep. And then later in the night, it was like, cool, why don't you take her to archery tomorrow? I'll stay home and do some work and get that done before I take Kaylee to riding later. And Liam has football tonight, right? Normal life stuff, all this stuff going on. But even in those things, these conversations are happening. And I had a moment today where I felt the reminder of, oh, there's a check that's got to go out. And I hesitated before reminding Andrew before asking the question of, hey, can you write a check? Or don't forget that check. Because I was double checking on, am I still micromanaging? Or this is this the intuitive nudge of like, oh yeah, don't forget that. Where's my intention? Where am I coming from when I'm asking him this question? Because if I'm coming from fear that it's he's not gonna follow through and he's not gonna do it, that's my feminine not trusting the masculine that he is to follow through with something. 
a lot of us have that belief within us that the masculine isn't going to follow through because he's been micromanaged for so long because he's been criticized and pushed down when he does do something or he tries to do something or he does it differently. He has been criticized so many times that it's deflating and he's not going to show up and he's not going to try and he's not going to follow through because what's the point? So today's nudge was questioning, you know, am I still micromanaging or is this genuinely like, oh yeah, don't, we can't forget to do this today. Let's make sure that this happens. Um, and after I took that moment, it was like, oh yeah, just remind him to grab the check so that they put it in the car because if we forget it, it's not such a fun thing to have to deal with. Um, so it was an easy shift for me, but I had to take those moments to have that conversation of am I still trying to micromanage? And this isn't just about between me and my husband. If I'm experiencing this type of energy between my husband and I, my partner and I, literally the masculine and feminine dynamics in our household, then what's going on internally with me where I'm micromanaging my own inner masculine? And when I look at that, I'm looking at the goals that I've set or the things I want to do or the stuff I want to accomplish or the things that I'm striving for in life. Am I micromanaging those things? Am I allowing my masculine to lead and to take charge or is my feminine still a little bit freaking out? Is she trying to micromanage or does she just need reassurance? The feminine will always need reassurance. Ladies, (laughs) the feminine always needs reassurance. We need to stop judging ourselves for needing it. We need to stop asking for reassurance with that needy, clingy, baby, pain in the ass energy. We need to own that we're looking for the reassurance. We're looking for where are the boundaries? Where is the support? Is it still there? I relate it to like walking on the ice, um, probably because I live in Michigan. So in the wintertime, uh, there's ice all over ponds and lakes. And you go out and you step and you feel and you look at, is it still good? Is it still safe for me to be able to do the things I want to do out here and to show up and go out and play? And you'll play for a little while and it'll be great. And then you have to kind of check again. Is it still good? You know, the weather changes. Is it still good? You constantly need that reassurance that it's still good and it's got to be able to support you. So the feminine will need that and that's fine. So we need to own that. We need to be okay with that. We need to accept that. We need to express that with authenticity and um, confidence and acceptance within ourselves. The true masculine, the empowered and embodied masculine has zero problem giving that reassurance to the feminine. Zero issue, zero complaining. It's never a like, God, can't you just like, I told you I loved you. Can't you just accept that? Like, why do you constantly need me to tell you? Why are you being so clingy and needy? Why can't, why do I have to reassure you again? I feel like I'm carrying you. I'm dragging you. Can't you just accept it? Like all that drama shit, right? The empowered and embodied masculine is happy to give the reassurance and show that I'm solid. You're good. I'm here. So look at those relationships externally and go internally. Where am I still micromanaging my goals? Where am I not trusting? Where am I trying to make things show up the way that I think they need to show up instead of letting them be the natural way that they are? Letting the universe show up in a way and God guide me in a way that's going to support me and and move me forward. Or am I still micromanaging the universe? Am I still micromanaging God? Ask yourselves these questions so that you can start making different choices that are going to support your expansion, abundance, and growth. This is how you do it, piece by piece. You have the awareness, you ask the questions, you have the internal conversation. Again, the gap in communication is what I talk about in that book. There's a link in my bio if you want to go click that so you don't have to search it. But this is what allows you to create the different dynamics so we can continue to evolve and mature into this next level that's here. Where the masculine is full support, safety, security, stability, providing on purpose, in purpose. And the feminine gets to consume and create and transmute and flow and be and power and inspire and ideas and passion. They both go together. We need both. 
and they're both trying to evolve. And right now we're dealing with the masculine that has been a little deflated. It's been micromanaged. We need to rebuild that trust and this is how we do it. So ask yourself those questions. I'm always happy to hear from you and answer your questions that you have about this process or what you're experiencing. If you're interested in the masculine initiation process, uh, you need to message me and reach out because I August, oh, I almost said October, August 5th is when the next round is beginning. I have this first round underway and they're doing really amazing things pretty much immediately because that's how this work works. Um, but August 5th, I'm going to be starting a new round. I have three spaces available for that right now. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you message me and uh, we'll get you into that process and get you registered and signed up. That is it for today. Be fierce about who you are and what you desire in your life. Go ask yourself these questions and embrace your truth. See ya.